I'm conservative and uh, always have been. Religiously, I am very middle of the road. There are a lot of religions that say good things and, and provide good guidance for people. And I think we all pray to the same God and I think that's fine. Somebody once coined the phrase, I'm okay, you're okay. I've always been a Protestant. I was, I was christened a Catholic as an infant, but um, uh, we leaned toward Protestantism in my formative years. But I'm comfortable in any religious setting. I go to Catholic church sometimes and I take communion. Um, I've been to Jewish services. I, I was best man at a Jewish wedding. Um, and uh, I also uh, have been uh, uh, interested in, uh, in connection with the Baha'i Faith, which is another all-inclusive group. We went to Sunday school from probably age four, and we learned the little songs that they taught, Jesus loves me, this I know. Um, so, and we said prayers at night. My mom would have us in, you know, in our room and we said our prayers and then we, we were allowed to go to bed. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody said, well, you can't prove that there's a God. And of course, the stock answer to that is, well, you can't prove there isn't one either. I'd rather play it safe and believe there is one rather than show up at the pearly gates and find out that I'd made a bad mistake. Well, uh, moving to Cranston from a town, a little town like this, was, uh, was really a major deal for me. It occurred when I was just short of 11 years old. It was a landmark uh, sea change in the style of living, the size of the house, the, uh, uh, the, the makeup of the community, and just uh, being a, a, a small fish in a big pond. Cranston West was practically a brand new school. It was only the second year it had been open. We had one class, the eighth graders, ahead of our class, and that was all there was. At the time, the B wing and the, the um, C wing and the cafeteria wing were the only parts that had been built. And uh, so we, uh, we blazed the trail. I was in student council in my uh, seventh grade year and we were tasked, the whole council, with uh, forming various committees in order to provide a school prayer, a school creed, a school mascot, school colors, and uh, a school philosophy that was student driven and our teachers gave us tremendous leeway as far as, um, you know, once we were given the assignment. Uh, and the committees were, were chosen, then we were pretty much on our own. Although I did get a lot of help in my projects from uh, my English teacher, who was Miss Petty. Just checked my grammar, and she pointed me in the right direction on the school creed, um, because, of course, credo is the word uh, our our, the Latin for our word creed, and that means to believe. So when I wrote the creed, I had to rewrite it, prefacing each one of my, my items in it with the terms, I believe, in Cranston High School West. The prayer went pretty well. Uh, I didn't have much, uh, much input from anybody else about that. Very, very, very little. Um, I seem to recall that uh, the operative words were action words. They were um, for us to do, for us to learn, for us to help, uh, those things like that. This was an appeal for guidance, essentially. I've kind of reconstructed that uh, over the years, uh, or actually since the, um, since the whole issue came up. And it, uh, you know, for, for want of a better word, back then we called it a prayer, but it could very well have been labeled the school appeal. I don't remember, honestly. Yeah. It was 51 years ago. Yeah. Um, I probably did scratch some, some words down on a piece of math paper, 
And then, of course, I had to, um, you know, write it over in a smooth hand version. And then we typed it up on Ditto and handed them, handed them out to the, uh, the student council members. And they read them and voted on it. And they were passed unanimously. None whatsoever. I had free reign. Um, it wasn't put up, you understand, until 1963. And uh, we used the prayer in morning exercises prior to that time. And uh, the class of 63 made it a class gift to have those placards put up in the auditorium walls where they still are. We used morning exercises. Um, we, st we stood, there was an announcement read over the PA system to every homeroom and a, a student uh, led us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then uh, the school prayer. Prior to that, we used the Lord's Prayer, also known as the Our Father, which of course is completely denominational. And the whole idea behind the prayer was to make it non-denominational so that it would apply to everyone. At the time, I just went with the flow. I mean, I was perfectly willing to say the ending, the Protestant ending. Uh, the Catholics say it too, they just don't say it as one part of the same prayer. They add it in later on. Hardly at all. I had been back to the school just a handful of times since I graduated in 1965. And, uh, I thought about it briefly and said mostly like, I wonder if those things are still there. And I was able to get into the auditorium on one of my visits and sure enough, there they were. And that gave me kind of a good feeling. Yeah, sure. I heard it on the radio. I was in the car uh, and I heard, I was tuned into WHJJ and at, during their headline news on the hour, uh, there was talk about the uh, prayer banner at Cranston High School West, and I said, well, I'll be dipped. I wrote that prayer, so I inquired, and uh, I contacted WJAR, and then uh, after that, the word got around, and the other two TV stations and the Pro Providence Journal contacted me and uh, told me about the meetings. And I, of course, I had already found out about that, but everybody wanted a little piece of the action. They wanted to talk to me about it, and, you know, being rather a unique individual and being the progenitor of, of the prayer, uh, it was quite obvious people wanted to go to the source. Well, I believe that it is a minor issue. I believe that uh, someone has uh, made a big deal out of something that has been benignly in existence for half a century, and uh, I don't see any point in it. Oh, absolutely no point in removing it, but absolutely no point in, uh, in making a big deal out of it. It's a waste of time and money. Well, not being a very political person um, or having a very great legal mind, um, I consider that uh, the Establishment Clause also uh, has been instrumental in establishing atheism as a religion, and that for that reason, uh, if you take the banner down, you're favoring one religion over the others. So I think it's a catch-22 there. So, you know, for the historical and the personal interest in the banner that I have, uh, I can see uh, no, no way but to leave it where it is. In the context of this, this um, situation, I don't believe that two little girls have any idea what atheism is. They're not old enough to know or to appreciate. Perhaps after they graduate and then by that time, uh, you know, they'll be adults and they can start thinking and acting like adults. That's my personal feeling. I think they're put up to it and I think they're being used as train seals to, uh, to get uh, their, their picture in the paper and uh, to, to sound off about it. I don't see a lot of the student body attaching itself to this one way or the other.
I mentioned the Warren Court because after they handed down a decision removing prayer from the schools, and I believe ironically that it was in 1963, because very suddenly thereafter, our morning exercises consisted of the pledge to the flag and then a moment of silence. That was the biggest change that I was uh, aware of as a, um, as a 16 year old. And having been the author of the prayer, I thought, well, gosh, you know, why, why don't we still say the school prayer? So I continued to say it, you know, to myself and perhaps other kids did too. Incidentally, my, own, my personal feeling is that that decision, removing prayer from the school, was a, uh, the starting point of a, a, a tremendous erosion in the, the uh, character and quality of our students. <clears throat> they're, not, they're not held to a higher standard. They're not cognizant of a higher power. Uh, there's no, there are no consequences. There's no guilt for aberrant behavior. Um, it's, it's, it's wrong. Kids need guidance. They need, they need um, inspiration. They need help. And that's what my prayer gives them. That was, those were my words also. Yeah. It has to be 10,000 in 50 years, or pretty darn close to it. Just a ballpark figure. But uh, no one's been hurt by that. They're all better people for it. All I said was, I think, there are plenty of blank walls. I didn't say you had to look at them. I said there are plenty of blank walls for atheists. I disagree with that completely, uh, especially from where Mr. Bloom is coming from. Um, to be perfectly honest, I, I wasn't surprised at his attitude. He had no opinion either way. All he used continually whined about was balance, balance, balance. And I'm sorry, but there's no room for balance. It's, it's there. It's not hurting anyone. And uh, if people have blank walls in the auditorium and they want to think of that as their blank wall, that's fine. I'm not going to tell them to look at my prayer. And no, as I said also in the interview, uh, no one is forced to recite, to think about, or even to look at that prayer. I've got no problem with that, but that, that particular item is a part of the founding of Cranston High School West. I think the ACLU started out as a very good organization and with the liberalizing and the progressivizing of our society, uh, they've moved in and they've made a niche for themselves where uh, it's become more of a problem than a solution. I did hear something about it. It's, it's, not, it's not art, it's, it's English composition. Um, any more than uh, a, a Torah scroll or the Ten Commandments or anything else would be if it was put on the wall. Okay. Or, a, or a blank wall. I didn't say I was a fan of the platters, I just happened to use that example and I don't know if it was uh, e even appropriate, but the last stanza of that song uh, had words to the effect of what I was trying to say. About my, and of course, the title of the song is My Prayer, and it's a very personal thing to me, and it has become more so uh, since this whole thing started. Well, I've always been, I hate to say it, larger than life. And if somebody uh, needed someone to head a committee or to uh, volunteer for something or to fill an office, uh, quite often I would be approached and, uh, and be uh, dragooned, maybe is the right word, into doing something like that. And uh, I've usually allowed myself to do that because I have a lot to offer. Well, when, when you've taught school for over a quarter of a century, you have to learn how to think on your feet. And I did have prepared remarks, not like tonight. Specifically, 
it would be if it were a Christian prayer, it very likely would have said, uh, this we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. That does not appear. Uh, you can get a prayer out and you can do it without being denominational, without being exclusive. And that was my whole intent at the time. Nor have I seen any Hindus raise the issue. I was very, very comfortable with the term in a wide variety of um, experiences as a kid. I am now. I was not aware of it then. Let's say I'm aware of it. Um, I don't feel very strongly about it. The whole, as I say, the whole intent of of the prayer, if you want to call it a salutation, uh, whatever, uh, the whole intent when I wrote it was to be as all-inclusive as I could make it. We didn't have Muslims back then, we didn't have any of the other esoterics. We had, we had a lot of Jewish kids and I felt badly for them in seventh grade when we used to just have to recite the Our Father in the morning because they just stood there and didn't do anything. I said, we can do better than that. And when I got the opportunity, or not the, it was, the, it was an opportunity, but it was a diktat, really. You're, go, you're going to head this committee and get with it. So I did. I tried to be as inclusive as I could. That's the whole idea behind it. We didn't have any atheists, or if we did, there was no direct mention of it. it, it, it it's just something that came up somewhere along the line, and it's, it's a product of of a more, very different America than the one I grew up in, where uh, nowadays everything is about diversity and identity and uh, uh, license and stuff like that. And uh, we, we didn't grow up that way. I don't necessarily think it's sincere. Um, it's just, it's a chance to get, to get notoriety. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult subject because I, I don't know, I shouldn't use the word sincere because I think some people really do not believe, if you will, and yet they want to call it belief, and now the law allows them to say that they believe. They believe not to believe, yeah. which is kind of an oxymoron. No, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that at all. They're blank walls. But the people that were offended, pardon, pardon the word, by my prayer um, can, look, can look at one cinder block, you know, that's, or a whole stack of them. And some people say they want it to be all or nothing, all or nothing right? You've got to be inclusive. Uh, but the banner's been there too long now. It, it's, uh, it's a historical document. It's part of the fabric of Cranston West. It has not injured or hurt any student at any time. Uh, and if it did, in my experience, nobody, nobody said anything about it. So it's a little late for that now. No, no, no. That would be like removing um, from the preamble of uh, the Declaration, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Now, I, I heard President Obama do that. He put in endowed with certain inalienable rights. He didn't acknowledge the Creator. And I was, I was personally shocked. So that's the same thing as altering the prayer. So the pundits jumped on it and someone said, oh, it was just a slip. He did it again. He meant it. I absolutely do. Judeo-Christian. Uh, that it was the right thing to do. It was product of the Age of Enlightenment. Uh, it's uh, essentially, it's, it's a very, very liberal and all-inclusive uh, philosophy of government. And once again, it hasn't hurt any American to follow the rules and the, uh, for example, the Bill of Rights uh, in, uh, since its inception. It hasn't hurt anyone. And it's kept the country cohesive. Uh, the problem we have now is that people tamper with it and you can, you can uh, amend the the, the Constitution by a vote of five to four. Now, you don't have to have all the states and all the people have a plebiscite, and that's wrong.
so not being know. a legal mind, um, I, I think that the, the, the uh, document is as near perfect as it can be as it was written. It was truly a, a, a document of, of enlightened minds and by enlightened men. Yes, I believe it was. And so was uh, uh, Handel's Messiah and any other uh, wonderful creations uh, from, from that era and, and from, from all of humanity. It is freedom from religion as well as freedom of religion. And because it says freedom of religion, you can't abridge a person's or an organization's right to have it. But you're not prevent, present, prevented from not having it. It means that you don't have to believe, you don't have to go to church, you don't have to be or say or do, unfortunately, some of the same things, and I think it leads to bad behavior. It cuts you adrift from the moral fabric uh, that was intended for this country. No, no, that's the whole idea behind the Establishment Clause. It's, it's perfect the way it is. Personally, personally, I was touched and inspired. I think it was a, 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 a microcosm of the good old New England town meeting where people can stand up and speak their mind, and that's freedom of speech, and I believe that's in the first um, two. And no one was prohibited or enjoined from speaking.